Hi, my name is Reagan, and welcome to the best Algebra 1 teaching video you will ever see. Let's start out with the basics. In Algebra, there is two basic things everyone needs to know. X and Y. But nothing is ever this easy. There's a lot of different names for X and Y. The first one you need to know is X can also be called an independent variable. while y is called the dependent variable. This is because y is dependent of x. The next one you should know is that all of the x values in a function are called the domain. A function means that for every input, there is exactly one output. So that means that for every x value, there is simply one y value. So for example, let's say we had the equation y equals 3x. And let's say that our x value was 2. So y equals 3, 2. y equals 6. So your y value is now we're going to talk about the difference between a function and a relation. A relation is the interaction between two things. And a function means that for every x value, there is exactly one y value. This can all be demonstrated with a few graphs. A function would just have one x value. While a relation can have multiple x values for the same, can have multiple y values the same x value. One easy way to determine if something is a function or relation is by doing the VLT, or vertical line test. If a line has multiple points on it, that means that you have multiple x values, and that it is not a function. But this one is. Staying on graphs, when a graph is going up, it's called positive correlation. But when, a but when a graph is going down, it's called negative correlation. Now we're going to talk about an expression versus an equation. The difference between the two is that an equation has an equal sign, but an expression does not. For example, 5 plus 3 is an expression, while 5 plus 3 equals 8 is an equation. Sometimes expressions can get way too long, but don't let this intimidate you. All you have to do is combine like terms. For example, 3a and 6a combines to be 9a, and negative 2 and negative 4 combines to be negative 6. Drop down that 5a squared. Find all of your terms. You solve equations by undoing things and doing to one side what you do to the other side. To start off, let's isolate x. So we'll add 7 to each side. 3 plus 7 is 10, and negative 7 plus 10 is 0. So now we have 5x equals 10. Now to get x by itself, let's divide by 5. 5x divided by 5 is x, and 10 divided by 5 is 2. Therefore, x is 2. Now let's move on to solving inequalities. An inequality is like an equation, but it uses the greater than or less than symbols. Other than that, it's pretty much the same. To start off, let's divide by 4 to isolate x. x is greater than 2. But what happens when it's a negative 4? You have to multiply or divide by negative 4. 
when dividing or multiplying by a negative number, you have to switch the sign in the middle. So the greater than sign would become a less than sign. Now x is less than negative 2. Now let's talk about absolute value. Absolute value is the distance a number is from 0 on the number line. So for example, the absolute value of 5 is 5 because it's 5 away from 0. Now absolute value is always a positive number. So the absolute value of negative 5 would be 5 because negative 5 is 5 numbers away from 0. Now that we've covered the basics, let's move on to linear equations. Linear equations make a line on the graph and are written in slope-intercept form. y equals mx plus b. <laughs> You're probably pretty confused. So let's go over what slope-intercept form is. Slope-intercept form has the two basic components of algebra, y and x, and it also has m and b. m stands for slope. Slope is the rate of change in an equation. So for example, the slope of 2x would be 2. B stands for the y-intercept. The y-intercept is where a line crosses the y-axis on a graph. So for example, in 2x plus 4, 4 would be your y-intercept. To help visualize linear equations, let's graph one. In this equation, y equals 2x plus 1. So where do we start? At our y-intercept, which in this case is 1. So on our y-intercept, we put a point at 1. But how do we turn this into a line? Another way to figure out slope is rise over run. A fraction. 2 in a fraction is 2 over 1. So the rise is 2, so you go up 2, you rise. And then you go over 1, because that's our run. And then you just keep doing that to finish your line. Up two, over one, up two, over one. And there is your line. But linear equations won't always be in slope-intercept form. Sometimes there is standard form, which an example of this is 3x minus y equals 4. To graph this, you need it to be in slope-intercept form. So there's a number of relatively easy steps to bring you to this slope-intercept form. The first is to isolate y. So on both sides, you would subtract 3. This would bring you to negative 2y equals negative 3x plus 4. But now you need to get y without that negative 2. So on both sides, you would divide by negative 2. This would bring you to y equals 3 over 2x minus 2, which is an easily graphable slope-intercept form. Sometimes you will be given two points and asked to give the slope-intercept form. Don't let this scare you. There's a few simple steps you can take to find the answer. The first thing you can do is find the slope, given your two points using the slope formula of m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Simply plug in your points to find the slope. So the first thing you would do is plug in your y's. So your second y, y2, would be 2. So m equals 2 minus your first y, which is 1. Over your second x, which is 6 minus your first x, which is 3. 2 minus 1 is 1, over 6 minus 3, which is 3. m, your slope, equals 1 third. Now you need to find the y-intercept, which can be done by plugging in your newly found slope with two of your points into the slope-intercept formula. slope-intercept formula is y equals mx plus b. Plug in your slope and either one of your two points, so y or 2 equals 1 third times 6 plus b. For 
try and find b. So the first thing you would do is multiply 1 third times 6, so 2 equals 1 third times 6, which is also 2, plus b. Now to find b, you have to isolate it. So in order to do that, you need to subtract 2 from both sides. 2 minus 2 is 0, and 2 minus 2 is 0, so you're left with b. So b equals 0. Your y-intercept is 0, so your final formula would be y equals 1 third x. Let's move on to systems of equations. Systems of equations are two equations with the same solutions. So for example, y equals 2x and y equals negative x plus 3. There are a number of different ways to solve systems of equations. One way to solve systems of equations is by graphing them. So here we have two equations, y equals 2x and y equals negative x plus 3. And all we have to do is graph them to find the answer. So the first equation, y equals 2x, doesn't have a y-intercept, so you would simply start at the origin, or 0, 0. Then you would do rise over 1, so up 2 over 1, and up 2 over 1. Our next equation is y equals negative x plus 3. y equals negative x is another way of saying y equals negative 1x, so negative 1 over 1 would be our slope. And since the y-intercept is 3, we start at 3. Negative 1. Where they intersect is the answer, so the answer to the systems of equations is 1, 2. Another way of solving systems of equations is by using substitution. The first step in substitution is to change one of our standard form equations to either equal x or y. Since y is already by itself in this one, we can easily turn this into y equals, move that 2x over to make it 2x minus 1. Now, we can put this into our other equation. We can rewrite this equation to be x minus 2. Now substitute y in with 2x minus 1 equals negative 4. Our first step in solving this equation would be to distribute this negative 2 to our newly added parentheses part. So firstly, it would be x. Now distribute that negative 2, so it would be negative 4x. Negative 2 times negative 1 is 2, so plus 2 equals negative 4. Now you combine your like terms, so x plus negative 4x would be negative 3x plus 2 equals negative 4. Now we need to isolate our x value, so we need to subtract 2 from both sides. 2 minus 2 is 0, and negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6. So now we have Now we have negative 3x equals negative 6. Now in order to get x by itself, we divide a negative 3 on both sides. Negative 6 divided by negative 3 is 2. So x equals 2. But we're not done yet. We need to find our y value. So let's go back to our original equations. which are negative 2x plus y equals negative 1. And our second equation is x minus 2y equals negative 4. Now we know x equals 2, so we substitute that in into either one of these equations to find y. So 
So let's substitute it into this one, just for the sake of easiness. So 2 minus 2y equals negative 4. Now we need to isolate y by itself, so subtract 2 from both sides. So now we have negative 2y equals negative 4 minus negative 2 is negative 6. Now we divide by negative 2 on both sides to again isolate y. So divide by negative 2. Negative 6 divided by negative 2 is negative. It's not negative, it's just 3. <laughs> so y equals 3. So the solution to the systems of equations is 2 comma 3. The last way to solve systems of equations is by using elimination. It's the process of eliminating one of the variables. To do this, you would add all three of the variables. So 2x plus negative 2x is 0. 3x or 3y plus y is 4y. And 20 plus 4 equals 24. Now you isolate y, so you divide by 4 on both sides, and y equals 6. Now you simply put this y into one of your equations. So, let's just do... Subtract 18 from both sides to isolate the x value. You're left with 2. So 2x equals 2 divided by 2 to isolate x. 2 divided by 2 equals um, 1. So x equals 1. Yet, systems and equations aren't always as cut and dry as I made them out to be. Of course, there are special situations. To solve both of these, let's use elimination. For the first one, the negative x and the positive x cancel each other out, as do the negative y and the positive y. The negative 4 and the 2 are left with 2. Negative 2. So we have 0 equals negative 2, which is not correct. Therefore, with these two equations, there are no solutions. On a graph, these lines would be parallel. They would never touch, therefore there are no solutions. On our second equation, the positive x and the negative x cancel each other out, as do the positive y and the negative y. So we have 0 equals, and 2 and negative 2 cancel each other out, so we have 0 equals 0. This means that we have an infinite number of solutions. How is that possible, you may have been wondering? It's because on the graph, both of these lines would be the exact same line. So, all those points are there. Now let's talk about foiling. When you FOIL, you distribute each term to every other term. This is fairly simple because FOIL is an acronym that stands for first, outer, inner, and last. So by following this, we can distribute each term to every other term. Let's start with the first terms. So 2x times x is 2x squared. And our x is squared because when you multiply x times x, you get x squared. Now, our outer terms are 2x and negative 1. So 2x times negative 1 is negative 2x. Now, our inner terms are 3 and x, so plus 3x. And then our last terms are 3 and negative 1, so minus 3. Now, to finish this off, we combine our like terms. So 2x squared 
Now combine the negative 2x and the positive 3x for simply x, so plus x minus 3. And this is the answer. The opposite of foiling is factoring. In order to factor, you must find two numbers that are both factors of our last digit and add up to equal our middle digit. This can get kind of complicated, but the first step is to find factors of negative 6. Let's start with negative 1 and 6. They add up to equal 5, which is not what we need. Let's go on to negative 2 and 3. Negative 2 plus 3 equals 1, which is what we need. So these are our factors. So in order to factor properly, we set them both as x. So x minus 2 and x plus 3. Now a very common mistake is that people will forget to set these to 0. So x minus 2, x plus 3 equals 0 is the answer. So now we have to do x minus 2 equals 0. So this is an equation that we have to solve. So x minus 2 equals 0. Now in order to figure this out, we have to isolate x. So we add 2 to both sides. 0 plus 2 is 2. So x equals 2. Same with this one. x plus 3 equals 0 minus 3 on both sides. x equals negative 3. These are our solutions. But what to do when there's a number in front of that x squared? The easiest way to do it is the cross multiplication method. It's the method of finding factors of both 3 and 4 that when cross multiplied add up to equal negative 8. Now this can get pretty confusing, but just keep it simple. The only factors of 3 that we can use are 3 and 1. Now there's multiple factors of 4 that we can use, so we can start with 1 and 4, but if we did that, 1 times 4 is 4, and 3 times 1 is 3, and 4 plus 3 add up to equal 7, which is not negative 8. Therefore, 1 and 4 are not our factors. Through trial and error, you will come up with the factors of negative 2, negative 2. A common mistake is people will forget about the negative numbers, have both negatives equal a positive, and they'll get kind of stuck. But you've got to remember that negative 2 are reliable factors. So. One times negative two is negative two, and three times negative two is negative six. Negative two plus negative six equals negative eight, and that is the number that we needed. Now, since the last number is positive, we added these numbers. But if the last number had been negative, you would have subtracted these numbers. Okay, so now we have our factors. What do you do with them? Now read it across. 3x minus 2 and x minus 2 is our answer. But you have to remember that both of these factors are set to equal 0. So now you have to solve the equation like that. Our first one is 3x minus 2 equals 0. So the first thing you'll do is isolate x. So subtract 2 from both sides. You'll add 2 to both sides. And this is 0, and this is 2. So 3x equals 2. Now divide by 3, and x equals 2 thirds. For our second equation, x minus 2 equals 0, add 2 to both sides, x equals 
equals 2. And these are your answers. Now we're going to go over quadratic functions and how they compare to linear functions. The parent function for a linear equation is x equals y. But the parent function for a quadratic function is x squared equals y. This is reflected on the graph by a linear function going through the origin, straight line, and a quadratic function is a parabola, which is this little U-shaped thing you see here. For the final part of the review, we'll be going over the quadratic formula, which is pretty intimidating. It's x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So, how do you get from this to this? It's fairly simple. 2x squared is equivalent to ax squared. 11x is equal to bx. And 5 is equal to c. So, plug in these three numbers into this equation, and you will get your answer to x. negative 11 plus or minus the square root of 11 squared minus 4, oh, make sure to put that 11 squared in parentheses, minus 4 times 2 times 5, divided by 2 times 2. Ready? The first thing you do is multiply. 11 squared is 121, minus 4 times 2 is 8, times 5 is 40, divided by 2 times 2, which is 4. The next step is to subtract, so 121 minus 40 equals 81. is 9. So now you have 11x equals negative 11 plus or minus this. Now it's just 9. <laughs> plus or minus 9 divided by 4. Now we go two separate directions because of our plus or minus sign. So the first step is x equals negative 11 plus or just plus 9 divided by 4. Now we have our other, so it's x equals negative 11 minus 9 divided by 4. Negative 11 plus 9 is negative 2, divided by 4 equals 1 half, negative. Negative 11 minus 9 is negative 20, divided by 4 equals negative 5. These are your answers. To conclude, x equals negative 1 half, and x equals negative 5. This concludes our Algebra 1 review. Thank you for watching, and have a great rest of your day.